Hi friends, it's Sarah from Ruffles and Rain Boots. Hey, um, check out these edges. Look at these edges. If you have a diode laser and you're sick of hearing people talking about how you can't cut acrylic, you should watch this. Primarily, I'll show you some wood stuff too, but ultimately, these Easter basket tags, this entire project was put together so I could talk about settings and about keeping your settings from testing. To make these beautiful pieces, it's so nice to get clean edges with a diode laser. I'm gonna use the X-Tool S1. I'm going to bring in, and by bring in, I mean drag in. You can always use the import from the menu. If you're new, make sure you remove anything that you don't really need. Text, for example. If you're new, if you see something stack like this, it means you have two functions available. I'm going to make mine an engrave, so I'm going to click on the blue layer and hit engrave. Then I'm going to click on the red layer and I'm going to hit cut. The engrave will happen over the cut. So just keep those lined up. I'm going to select everything and then size it. Let me get in a little bit so you can see. Mine is 4.6 inches tall for reference. I'm going to set everything to the right to be ignored. And the reason is, is because I just want to work with one color of acrylic first. I'm going to be working with a beautiful purple. I'm going to hit the T on the menu at the left. I'm going to add in a name, change the font and the size. Now, if you can't see it, it's because it's over here in the middle. I don't know why, it just is. Engrave for that as well and positioned it so that the little bunny tail can be uh, placed below it. Now let's talk about settings because we're there. I have three lasers and each of them have these massive spreadsheets I keep on Google Sheets and they have a drop down menu I created with a little bit of a range formatting kind of thing here. And they all have the brand, the uh, color, and my notes. Like that color is beautiful, but it doesn't cut because of the formulation of the acrylic. But guess what? The one from CMB does. This stuff is so valuable, whether I'm scoring, engraving, or cutting, doesn't matter the material, everything ends up on these sheets. And the reason when I have these here is because I can easily go in and set them, my manual settings. I prefer not to use the defaults because sometimes those defaults just don't work for me. I'm going to set my engraving at 50, 350 speed, and 200 LPC. Those are my settings that have worked the best to get a very light engraving on these two particular colors. And now my cut, again, those are set to ignore, right? So now my cut for this bunny that I just moved, I go back to my sheet, I look and see the winner for this particular color is 104 and one. And when I say winner, that means smooth edges, okay? 100% of the time, but that's me. You can write out a huge long diatribe of information if you would like. but I'm going to go ahead and finish putting in my settings here for everything, making sure it's good. And now we are to the, my favorite part, which is making the laser do all of the work for me. Isn't that nice? I'm using the X-Tool S1. You can see the bed is really dirty. I have a honeycomb. It's okay. Just don't look at it. I'm going to elevate the acrylic with quarters, wood, or a acrylic pieces. You can see this is my favorite. Purple is gorgeous. I'll put the link to it below. So I always elevate everything if my honeycomb looks like that, but it doesn't matter if the acrylic is masked or unmasked. I always elevate. I make sure it is level and then I pin it down so everything is solid. I'm going to grab a ruler just to make sure I can fit my little bunny over here and I can. So now it's time to pull the laser module with the crosshairs over the, over the material. I'm going to hit this little handy dandy auto distance measure feature. And what happens is the machine does all the hard stuff. You're going to watch the machine throw out this little switchblade thing on the side. It's going to tippy tap and then it's going to reset itself all the way over here on the right. This is my favorite machine, not because of this particular feature, but it doesn't hurt. I love this machine because of the accuracy. Start marking will allow us to measure our processing area. I choose a rectangle, position my crosshairs at the upper leftmost portion, hit start to lock in that vertex move the crosshairs to the bottom most right, hit start to mark in that vertex, and look at that handy dandy little rectangle. We just move whatever we want processed right into that. It's so accurate. When I frame it, look how perfect it's going to be. Beautiful. Now I'm going to process it by hitting process, then start on the software, and then start on the machine. If you hit the machine first, you run the risk of running your previous job. This is real time 104 and 1. It's slow. 
but it produces beautiful edges. I'm going to pull this out of the machine so you can see exactly what I, I'm not editing anything, I'm not sanding anything. When I pull this out of the machine, you'll see the edges are beautiful. The engraving is gorgeous, but the little fuzzy bit is only the masking. For the coral, I removed the masking on the back, popped in some 467, this is 3M adhesive, and now I'm gonna cut it so it automatically has that sticky stuff on it. I'm gonna set this one to ignore, I'm gonna remove the marking area, set the distance, set the marking area, and do it exactly the same. Start on the software, start on the machine. It's going to engrave, this is real time at 350 speed, and then it will cut. Now, why those settings are so important. There are 52 ways I can engrave this particular color. But if I want the whitest and brightest color so that I can have the most contrast, I have found that this particular setting works for me and my laser. And the only way I found that was through testing my particular laser. Look at that. She's pretty. I went through and processed another acrylic and two wood ones. So I have all of my little Easter basket uh, tags and ornaments. For my engraving, I was too lazy to go to get the air compressor. So I'm just using masking tape. I have a tiny little bit of flashback on that bunny, so I'm just going to sand that down. And now it's time to wipe the edges. So this is a question I got quite a bit. Why do I wipe the edges? This guy over here doesn't wipe the edges. Listen, you can sand the edges, you can seal the edges, or you can wipe the edges. I do this because I tend to get char fingerprints on my stuff if I don't. And I make sure to get that little ribbon hole too. So I want to show you on the back of this little cutout, so this is the overlay on this particular file. I did not mask or elevate and watch the back. That's a honeycomb. All that flashback, but I knew I was gluing it, so it didn't matter. I don't gatekeep anything, so this is the spray I'm using to seal my wood, Krylon UV Resistant Clear. I pin it to cardboard so I can get all of the edges. I flipped over the Elise one, and I got the back of that one too. We're gonna set those aside, but we will need super glue and Gorilla Glue to assemble that piece. I use a little bit of makeup brush to just move off any of the engraving dust and then remove the masking. If you can't get it off, Gorilla Tape is my go-to, but I just had that pick. So once the masking is off of that one, I love this color, look how pretty she is. Uh, we're gonna remove the masking on the coral as well. You can see that backside is the tape, is the 3M adhesive. When you're working with the 3M adhesive, you have a little bit of wiggle room. With the 300 SLE, I don't, but this 467, I do. You'll see me with the bow, pop it on, and then wiggle it around just to make sure the top was aligned. Ready? I've got a little wiggle room, but once you press it down, it's, it's there. Speaking of making sure it stays there, I'm going to put little pieces of cardboard over my acrylic and then clamp those two pieces on just because I'm paranoid. No, I, I just think it adds a little bit of extra security. I used to glue my fingers a lot together with super glue. This is a true story. My husband has pictures. But since I found this super glue pen, I tell everybody about it because I love it. To adhere wood, I'm going to do two things. One is I'm gonna use a paintbrush with Gorilla Wood Glue, and I'm gonna make little dots all over the place with spaces in between. Then I'm gonna take my little super glue pen and I'm gonna put little dots in between the wood glue dots. The reason I started doing this is because it never comes apart, and uh, I don't have that, like I don't have an excess of glue anymore. So when I first started with this, I would have a little glue squish out the sides. <laughs> Uh, I don't with this. And so this is my method. If you know a better way, let me know down below. I'm still learning. So I just sit over it and make sure I don't move it around too much. Otherwise, you get that little snail trail of glue goo. It's not great. I also do a little cardboard clamp action with this. And then I let them sit while I clean up my laser. Obviously not the honeycomb because I hate that task, but I'll just spray it with Dawn dish soap or Dawn Power Wash, whatever it is. All right, this stuff went viral on one of my videos. It's one inch chiffon ribbon. You can buy fabric from Joann's, rip it yourself, or just buy it on Amazon like I do. I also use velvet ribbons and they're done. So I hope this was a fun little project to watch, but ultimately I hope that you understand the importance of dialing in those settings, especially for acrylic. We get beautiful results. Hey, follow for more. Subscribe to the channel. Thanks for being here.